this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up a spreadsheet that will help you calculate probabilities for random variables that are normally distributed. In other words, how to find probabilities under the bell curve. Let's begin by entering the mean and the standard deviation, and we'll first assume that we're dealing with a standard normal distribution, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. This way, if I want to standardize my value of negative 1.23, when I use the z-score formula, I know I should still get negative 1.23 because the x values of a standard normal distribution are already z-scores. So I've begun with equals and an open parenthesis, so I can take my x value minus the mean and close parentheses, divide by the standard deviation, and press enter. All right, so that looks good. Now if I want to know the probability of getting a value that is less, than this x value, I can use norm.dist, which always gives me a left probability, left to the left of a boundary. The boundary would be x, comma, the mean, comma, the standard deviation, and comma, true for cumulative, or you can just type a 1, which the computer understands to mean yes. Now the area to the right, or the probability of a z-score to the right of negative 1.23 would be 1 minus the left area. Okay, so that's all set up. Now in many problems, you'll only have one boundary. If you have two boundaries, you might be looking for the area between them. So if you do have a second boundary, this would be where you would place the larger boundary, the one that's farther to the right. So let's say we want to do the area between 1 point, uh, well, let's go a little higher, 2.14. I can still calculate the z-score. Same way I did before, just doing x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Should be the same since we're dealing with a standard normal distribution right now. And the left area will be found by doing norm.dist, the boundary, then the mean, then the standard deviation, and then cumulative. And the area to the right of that would be 1 minus the left area. Now to find the area between these two values, you'll want to start with the larger bit the larger x value's probability to the left minus the smaller x value's probability to the left. And there you'll have the area that's in between those two boundaries. All right, this is all set up. Let me try it with an example that has a non-standard normal distribution. Or how about this? I know. Why don't we first try it with the standard normal distribution, and we'll do negative 1 and positive 1. And we know by the empirical rule that we should have a probability that's about 0.68, because we know 68% or about 68% of the values are expected to fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And notice that my between area is 0.6827, so that's a good sign. What about if we do negative 2 and positive 2? What does the empirical rule say about two standard deviations from the mean? About 95%, so that looks good too. What about three standard deviations? We know it should be 99.7%, and there you see 0.9973 as a decimal. So this seems to be operating very well. Let's now try it with a non-standard distribution. Let's say we have a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 15, and a smaller x value. Let's say these are IQ scores, adult IQ scores that are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And we want to know the probability of getting an IQ that is less than, let's pick something really small. Let's see, more than two standard deviations would be uh, how about 67? So that has a z-score of negative 2.2 and a very small probability of getting an IQ score that's lower than that. So it's rare to see an IQ score less than 67. And it's very common to see one that's greater than 67. What about 
um, a higher IQ score, like uh, 142 or 147. Wow, that has a very large Z-score. That's more than three standard deviations from the mean. The likelihood of getting an IQ score that's less than 147 is very likely, almost certain, and it's extremely rare to see an IQ score that is greater than 147. And the area between the two values, let's pick something more common like, well, one standard deviation below the mean would be 85, and one standard deviation above the mean would be 115, and notice that we have that 68% showing up again. So that's how you construct the calculator, and that should serve you well to answer all your probability problems, and in another video we'll test it out with more examples.